I'm Simi Pasha and you're watching Good News Today. Over the next half an hour, we'll bring you positive stories of hope and courage. Stories that don't necessarily make headlines, but showcase the triumph of the human spirit. Our first story comes from the city of joy that today has more reason to justify its football mania. Three youngsters from Kolkata have been selected by international experts for training at Argentina's prestigious Boca Juniors club. The trio has all at once become a source of envy and pride. Indrajit Kundu with their story. Flags, banners, life-size cutout of football stars, wall graffitis and sweets. The city of joy is celebrating the most beautiful game in style. Adding to the frenzy of the football carnival in Kolkata are these young footballers, Johan, Liam and Muzaffar, three budding stars who are getting a chance to live their soccer fantasy. The trio is preparing to train at the world-famous Boca Juniors Football Club in Argentina. For those of you unfamiliar with the club's legacy, it's the same club that Diego Maradona played for. Uh, I think it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity for all of us to travel to Argentina. Um, it's actually the land of the footballing gods and it's a bit more personal for me because I am an Argentine supporter and I idolize Maradona and Messi. So to be able to set foot on Argentine soil is a completely, it's a completely new experience and it will be absolutely fantastic. He still isn't able to sink in. I think it's been around two weeks and it still isn't hasn't sunk in yet. It's something that I've only dreamed of. I mean, it's, I never thought in my wildest dreams I would go to such a place, be in the same place that Maradona trained in, the same country, and it's, it's very different for me. And I'm hoping that it's going to be an experience that change, changes my life. These youngsters were selected from among 4,000 aspirants from over 400 schools and colleges from across the country by experienced trainers, who had come to India on a talent hunt. Of the three, Muzaffar, who comes from a humble background, has already trained with Arsenal when he was just 14. Muzaffar says he's saddened by the fact that achievements in other sports, apart from cricket, go unrecognized in the country. I was very disappointed when I played in the IPL football. Looking ahead, the talented three feel their careers as footballers will get a huge boost with the training program at Boca Juniors in Argentina. The coaches who came to Goa, they, the training methods and the way they taught us how to look at football was very different from um, how we train over here in Calcutta. So I think it's mainly the experience and the knowledge about football which I'm looking forward to gaining so that I can put it to better use when I'm playing later on in the future years. Excited about their chance to visit Latin America soon after the Brazil World Cup, these youngsters claim they're rooting for Argentina. A city which is as obsessed with Pele and Maradona as it is with East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, Kolkata today, has one more reason to indulge in itself. With two kids from the city representing their soccer dreams in football country, Kolkata is quite literally wearing its passion on its sleeves. With camera person Tapus Bairi Indrajit for headlines today in Kolkata. We're all too used to 
getting stuck in traffic jams during peak hours in big cities and it can be quite a nightmare especially if you're going through a medical emergency but traffic cops in chennai achieved a feat by creating a free passageway for an ambulance that was carrying a freshly harvested heart from one hospital to another located 12 kilometers away in just 14 minutes shisha shetty with this story 6:30 in the evening and at that time to transport an organ from one corner of the city uh, from near the central station to here will take minimum of two to an hour hours and uh, especially for the heart the amount of time we have available before it's uh, it starts to fail is about four hours and this includes the time it takes to put the new heart in and that can take anywhere up to one to one and a half hours uh, depending on other circumstances the parents of the patient were at a loss for words their daughter was suffering from end-stage heart failure and the transplant was the only option if she was to survive. The donor's mother. I would like to thank her from the bottom of my heart if it had not been for her. I would not have seen this day today. And the Tamil Nadu government, they are doing a wonderful job of ensuring that there are these green corridors, ensuring that the organ reaches the person in time. It was all done because of the green corridor that was provided by the Tamil Nadu police who have taken this initiative to put off all the red signals and that is one of the reasons that why they were able to save the heart of the person who was admitted at the Mala Hospital. In Chennai, Sri Sharaddi for Headlines Today. Did you ever think that a small white bindi could become an agent of change? Thanks to the efforts of Delhi boy Prakhar Jain, his No Child Brides White Bindi campaign is being recognized worldwide. Through his campaign, Prakhar is trying to create awareness about child brides in India, which accounts for 40% of the world's total child marriages. Take a look. There are 40% of the child marriages in the world still happen in India. And in India, there are 24 million child brides which reside amongst us. Uh, Though it's largely a rural problem, but it's not something which is not happening in the urban areas as well. And uh, because there's such a lack of awareness of the gravity of this problem, we thought of doing a simple yet effective uh, initiative with Child Survival India and Ours Worldwide together, where we wanted to reach out to as many people as possible and tell them about the problem. And it's this 6 feet by 4 tall art installation that has become a focal point of Prakhar's campaign. Made from 39,000 small soft white bindis, the composition is a portrait of a 15-year-old girl from Jharkhand who has now become a face of the movement. Prakhar and his friends travelled across rural Jharkhand and Haryana, raising awareness for almost 6 months. For every bindi that they sold, they added one to the installation. There was a resolution which United UNHRC had passed uh, against child marriages, making it a development agenda for the world from 2015 onwards. So hundreds of uh, countries from all over the world, all the UN members supported this. But shockingly, uh, India did not. The No Child Brides White Bindi campaign was also endorsed by designer Tarun Tahiliani during the Lakme India Fashion Week in March this year, where the entire crew and all models were seen sporting white bindis. Apart from global accolades and international recognition, this campaign has won the heart of a woman who Prakhar says has been his inspiration. शुरू में स्टार्टिंग में लगा कि क्या कर रहे हैं फिर बाद में जब इनका देखते रहे तो लगा कि नहीं हां ये बच्चे मेहनत कर रहे हैं इनकी मेहनत जरूर सफल होनी चाहिए क्योंकि इन्होंने दिन रात बहुत मेहनत की है उसमें प्रकर एंड हिज फ्रेंड्स नाउ प्लान टू ट्रैवल विद देयर इंस्टॉलेशन टू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री रेजिंग अवेयरनेस चेंजिंग माइंडसेट्स वन बिंदी एट अ टाइम प्रकर स्टोरी क्लियरली शोस इफ इंटेंशंस आर प्योर देन इवन स्मॉल इनिशिएटिव can lead to a bigger achievement. With camera person Vicky from Delhi, Ravish Pal Singh for Headlines Today. Our first piece of good news from the world of technology comes from Cameroon, where a 22-year-old engineer has developed a touchscreen tablet that is helping doctors perform heart examinations. Let's have a look.
Cameroon's healthcare system is declining and struggling to provide aid for residents. There are shortage of medical professionals and fewer than two doctors for every 10,000 people. Until recently, heart patients in rural Cameroon had to travel long distances for routine tests. Now, however, they can visit the smallest of local hospitals, thanks to the CardioPad. A medical touchscreen tablet created by local inventor and entrepreneur, 22-year-old Arthur Zhang. We've created a company called Highmore Medical that employs several engineers to get this project to work scientifically and on an entrepreneurial level. We want to produce more devices to meet the demand from hundreds of hospitals that really need this technology. At such a young age, Zhang has created a groundbreaking piece of technology that could revolutionize healthcare in underserved communities. We treat patients with heart problems without them having to go away for treatment. This device allows us to examine them here and perform the electrocardiogram, then send it to a specialist who sends back the final results. For heart patient Laurent Asomba, the cardiopad is a blessing in disguise. Asomba says he couldn't afford to travel to the nearest urban hospital for tests, but regular cardiopad monitoring enables him to live and work as normal. Arthur Zhang's company hopes to equip about a hundred rural hospitals through Cameroon. The next challenge is to build a solar-powered version to cope with the lack of electricity, widespread in many areas across the continent. It's stronger than diamond, more conductive than copper, more flexible than rubber, and you can't see it with your naked eye. Graphene has been hailed as a miracle material but producing it in large quantities has not been possible due to its volatile properties. But a group of scientists in Ireland have come out with a solution to that. And it's as simple as switching on your blender. It's where science fiction meets science fact. A material 200 times stronger than steel, yet so light even a block of its powder can balance on a flower. Graphene is the first wonder material of the 21st century and it's expected to transform almost every aspect of life. From strengthening plastic bottles to cancer therapy, bendable touchscreens to batteries that can charge electric cars in seconds, graphene's potential is practically limitless. And the really good news is that this man, Jonathan Coleman from Ireland's Trinity College, has broken new ground in the effort to speed up production of the wonder material by mixing it with soap and water in a common kitchen blender. This sort of black liquid and you notice that there are some suds there that's due to the surfactant and this is where the graphene is. Now at this early stage there's also graphite in there so we have to go, go through a processing stage where we separate the graphite from the graphene. Coleman says that the shearing force of the fast rotating blender blades can separate individual graphene layers, each the thickness of a single carbon atom. However, since graphene was first discovered a decade ago, it's proved extremely difficult to produce on an industrial scale. For Keith Patton, project leader for graphene at UK's Thomas Swan Limited, this new research is the breakthrough he's been looking for. The things that's been holding this back it's a supply of large-scale, large quantities of graphene, good quality graphene, at reasonably low cost. And this research that we've uh, been carrying out here has opened up a route to obtain these. Keith Patton hopes to produce a kilo of graphene per day by the end of the year. And with this newfound discovery, he's convinced that they have the perfect blend for success. An Israeli team has developed a new bed sensors for hospitals that give out vital information about patients unobstructively. Apparently, the system is more reliable than the conventional monitoring systems used in hospitals. Let's take a look at what this new technology is all about. It has been aptly named Early Sense, a device placed under mattress in an Israeli hospital. It's helping to ensure that patients' vital signs are monitored accurately but discreetly. 
According to early census CEO Avner Halprin, the sensor is an effective and safer alternative to conventional monitors which require the attachment of wires to the patient's skin. It's based on the sensor, which is this one, you see it here, which is placed under the mattress of a bed and monitors a patient continuously without ever touching his body uh, for heart respiratory in motion and gives alerts when uh, the earliest warning signs of deterioration are present and that makes the nurses and doctors much more effective in uh, intervening early and keeping them out of trouble. Early sense is also much less prone than conventional systems to send out false alarms. Connected to a bedside computer, the device monitors breathing, heart rate and heavy body movement. For nurse Anat Margrill, early sense has been a lifesaver. Two and a half years ago, before we started working with the system, we unfortunately had two incidents of patients that were found dead in their beds. Ever since, we've been using the system and we monitor the patients. We identify the difficult conditions of those patients. We had at least three or four incidents of ventricular fibrillation that the crew literally saved patients' lives. Early Sense is used in about two dozen hospitals in America. A sensor for home use is also being developed and Halprin says he is confident that these devices will significantly reduce patient emergencies and save lives. That's all we could pack into this edition of Good News today. You can send us your feedback, tweet the team at HLT Good News. Have a great weekend.